guys, Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time today with another oldie but a goodie. It's the gas station problem, problem number 134. Uh, this question is currently, as of uh, fall 2020, being asked by Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Uber, Apple, Bloomberg. So a lot of the big guns have picked it up. It's an old one, but it, it's clearly still being asked. And I thought it was it was interesting because, like most of the problems that I choose, there's a um, there's kind of an in intuitive way maybe you want to dive into your first time around, but that's not always the optimal solution. There's one little neat trick to get you right over the line. And so that's why I wanted to cover it. If you haven't tried already, pause the video, give it a shot, come on back, you all know the drill by now. So uh, this question essentially says there are N gas stations along a circular route where the amount of gas at a station I is gas of I. We also have a car, okay? So we have a car that's got an unlimited gas tank and it costs cost of I of gas to travel from station I to its next station I plus one. Okay, and we start a journey with an empty tank at one of the stations. And so it says we start with an empty tank at one of the gas stations. It doesn't tell us which one. The question will essentially be, tell me where we can start, all right, if we can at all. It says return the starting gas stations index if you can travel around the circuit once in the clockwise direction, um, otherwise negative one. They tell us also there's a solution that's unique. Uh, both inputs are, are non-empty. They have the same length. And each element in the input array is a non-negative integer, so like, we don't have to do any error checking. We're given legitimate inputs. Now, we're told that this is a, a, a circular road, if you will, with, with certain gas stations, and we need to see if we can do one, one full loop around clockwise, right? I think I said clockwise. Uh, yes, in the clockwise direction. So, if you were to start at, I'll call it gas station, or gas station zero. Gas station zero, you can fill up one unit of gas from. You can then drive three, three units, three, we'll call it miles, it's called, you know, gallons and, and miles. So you can do, you know, one gallon of gas and then uh, drive three miles, but rather, sorry, that's a stupid analogy, that's not what it's saying at all. You get one unit of gas, it costs you three units of gas to leave and get to the next place, all right? Sorry, my brain's all fried today. Um, if you can fill up one unit of gas, but it would cost you three units of gas to get to the next place. Well, that's not going to work out all so well because you know you're you're going to lose you're going to lose all your gas before you get there. Um, basically, what their point is is that the the output here in this question would be three, and the reason it would be three is as follows: If we started at index three right here, we could fill up four units of gas, all right, and it would cost us one to make it over, all right. So let me maybe I could I could write these down and, and walk through the example where. We're given one, two, three, four, five. And we're given three, four, five, one, two. All right. Three, four, five, one, two. Okay. So this is gas. This is cost. And if we start right here, all right, we are going to have essentially we're going to gain four units of gas. So we're going to say plus four. And then we're going to lose one getting to the next town. Okay, so now we're at, we've netted three. We get to the next town over, right? We're gonna gain five more units of gas, but it'll cost us two to get to the end. So in total, it'll be three plus five minus two will leave us at six. All right, so I know the math doesn't really check out here, but leave us at six. We're now sitting at this town. We're gonna gain one unit of gas and lose three to go over to the next town or the next gas station. So we're going to gain one, that'll be seven. We're going to lose three, that'll give us four. So we're now at four. Now, we'll start at two. We're at this town, excuse me. We're going to gain two and lose four. We're going to gain two, we'll be at six. We're going to lose four, we'll have two. Finally, we're at this town. So remember, this is where we started, okay? This is our starting point right here. Now we want to see if we can make it just over the edge and, and make it right back to where we started. So if we... we we have two liters, or two gallons, whatever, in the uh, in the tank right now. Two liters, and uh, it caught. We can fill up three, but it'll cost us five to get over. Meaning that we'll go. Excuse me. We'll go from two. We'll get to five. It'll cost us five to get there after we fill up. So we end up at zero. However, we did end up at our destination, and so that's why we're going to return this starting index. Now, and that that's pretty much you know, everything we kind of got to go through. In this case over here, there's nowhere you can start that'll actually allow you to do that because wherever you start, you're going to lose more gas than you would have filled up. 
and it's just not going to happen. So, how do we actually solve this problem? Well, there are two trains of thought. I'll, I'll walk you through what I think is the more more intuitive one, the one that I tried the first time around, and and it worked, but it was a it was a bit of a, a longer solution, so it wasn't it wasn't very efficient. What I thought to myself was the following. I thought, well, if I've got the gas and the cost at every given point, surely I can then, you know, create a, a new array called net. All right, so what's the net gas that I'm getting getting at any given position? And so I, you know, I figured here I'd have, uh, well, I'm gaining one unit of gas, one liter. I'm losing three. So here I've got a negative two gain. I would get one, but I would lose negative two. So I can't start here. Like it just, it's not possible, right? So that's definitely not an option. Same story over here. I gained, so I, I'm starting at zero by default in the question. If I gained two liters and then spent four, I would be again at negative two, and that's no good. Three and five, same thing. Once again, net negative. However, once I come across, once I come across this town here, I notice that okay, well, I'm getting four, and it's only going to cost me one to get to the next station. So this is an option for sure. And then same thing over here. I'm getting five, but it would cost me only two to leave. So I'm going to get the three. So what I did was I calculated this net array and, and basically started iterating through it, saying, if I'm looking at an index i. I'm looking at this index over here. If the gas is net negative, I can't do anything. If I'm looking at this, net gas is negative, can't do anything. Net gas is negative, can't do anything. Once I get to the net positive place, then what I figured what I wanted to do was to say, let me do a simulation from here. So now that I'm doing n walkthroughs, I'm going to do n more of them every time to try to simulate the actual path and jumping from one to the next. And so what would essentially happen is I've got a net gain here of three and the net gain here of three. And then when I start looping back around from the start, I lose two, lose two, lose two. So these gave me six. Here I lost six. I got to where I needed to because at the end I, I, I had no gas left, but I made it. I wasn't in the red. And so that, that kind of simulation works. And it, you know, if I'd, I'd urge you to give it a try to code that out yourself, it's it's not too bad. Um, it, it's a bit involved and you know, ultimately there's a much cleaner way to do it and that's the way that I want to show you. So. What we can do actually is uh, is we can do this in one pass. So we, we can actually do this entire thing in, in one pass. And there's one piece of information that we need to realize in doing it in one pass. And this is what that, that one piece of information is. And I, I don't think this one is obvious at all. No matter where you start from, okay, no matter where you start from, your, your goal is to touch every single gas station. Here there are five gas stations. No matter where we start, if you start here, you're going to have to loop all the way around and come back here at the start again. If you start at index one, you're going to have to go to the end and then jump over here back to the next one. Every single time you're taking the same steps, meaning this net calculation kind of holds no matter what. right? So no matter what happens, the total net gas we gain and, and release or, or, or spend, I guess, or whatever it costs us, that number is the same no matter where we started. So one thing that we have to notice is simply going to be if our total net gas, if it's less than zero, then we're going to say not possible. Okay. So if our total net gas is less than zero, it's just going to cost us more than we're ever going to gain. No matter where you start, it's not going to happen. And so one way to do this is, you know, check for that. And then if it's like, okay, it's not zero, well, let me try to find the next starting point. That works. But again, that would kind of be like a, a two-pass solution. We want to try to do this in one pass. So again, the crux of it here is if you can understand that the total net gas doesn't change no matter where we start from, you're almost there. The next thing we got to try to do is to then say, at any given point, let me keep track of my current gas. If I was to start here and I said, I'm going to fill up here and, and leave to the next town. What's my current gas situation going to be? Well, if I do that, my current gas is going to be at negative two. So that's no good. So that means this is not a starting point. All right. It can't be a starting point. If I go to, and this, by the way, I'm doing this all on my first pass right now. So we can even, you know, we don't, I'm, I'm not even going to calculate this. So I'll leave it here just visually. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll separate with the perforated line, but I'm not going to be including this in my solution. So this one over here clearly didn't work. And then I try here and I tell myself, okay, if I if I was to have started here, my current gas starts at zero. Um, and now, well, I fill up two, I lose four, I'm at negative two, so that's not gonna work. My current gas is like negative. I'm gonna 
you know, burn out halfway through. I'm, I'm not going to have any gas left. I'm going to be stuck and deserted in the middle of the Nevada desert. And that's bad news bears. We try the next one. Same story over here. Now, we check over here. All right, so we were checking over here and we realized, okay, my current net gas is positive. And every single time, by the way, every single time we're failing at one of these, we say, okay, this can't be my start. Let me try the next one. Let me try the next one. Let me try my next one. If I start over here and I set my starting point over, and, and right now I'm at index three, I realize, okay, my current gas is positive. Let me keep going. I'm not going to move my starting point while my current gas is positive. If at any point down the line, maybe I have another stop here and, and I realize like I'm just going to lose so much, I'm going to be in negative gas if I start here, then I can say, okay, none of these starts would have worked for me because no matter what, I would have lost at the end of the day. My current gas would have been negative. And so whenever we, we're going to drop this, and, and like I said, um, that that current gas, as long as our current gas never uh, never goes negative, then we can actually leave the starting point where it is and we can keep on going through the end of the array. We're going to make one whole pass through the array and then if our net gas is zero, we're going to return negative one. Or we're going to return negative one. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to simply return that starting point that we that we actually had, and and that's going to be about it. So I, I know we're almost 12 minutes here into the explanation itself. The code is going to be really simple, so I wanted to I wanted to make sure that this made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions on on the logic behind this one. I think it's kind of intuitive, but it's a head scratch. Like I really had to sit and, and think about this one when I when I, I saw the solution to, and and tried to like try to internalize it. Um, but anyways, like I said, drop the comments if you have any. And uh, otherwise, we're we're good to go. And let's let's take a look at the code and, and see what we can do from there. So like I suggested at the start, we would have we'd have to take care of our or we'd have to track our, our total gas, our current gas in a, a starting position. So I'll say total gas equals zero. Uh, current gas is equal to zero, and as well, we're going to have some start position, um, and I'll say start also equals zero, just by default. We are, are going to have some sort of for loop, so I'm, I'm going to be loop goes here, and at the end of the day, once we, we go through this whole loop, we said that we are going to return the starting index only if the total gas ends up being non-negative. If the total gas is negative, that means it will cost us more than we're ever going to gain, and we can't get to the end, no matter where we start. So we're going to return the start if it's actually a feasible trip. Otherwise, we are going to return negative one because of our instruction. So it says that to output negative one right here. Otherwise, return negative one if it's not possible. So otherwise, we're going to return negative one. Now, we said we're going to do this in one pass. So all I'm going to do is just going to set a standard for loop, and, and that's going to walk us through the length of these arrays, and both of which, again, we're, we were kind of guaranteed that they, they would be equal. So let's say for I and range and the length of gas, and that could have been cost as well. Um, what we want to do is we want to always be adding to our total gas. So we want to add the net result of how much we're gaining and how much we're losing onto our, both our total gas and our current gas. So we're going to say that total gas plus equals gas of I minus cost of I. At every step of the way, I'm going to say how much gas can I gain and then how much gas is going to cost me to get to the next town. We're going to be tracking this perpetually as we go. And at every step, of course, we're going to have to do the same thing with, with current gas. Oh, excuse me. With current gas, that's cost of I. And then once we do that at every single step, we need to ask ourselves, am I still good on gas? Right? Do, like, do I have enough to get to the next spot? So rather, let's ask the converse, am I in trouble? If I'm in trouble, I realize, okay, I can't start wherever I said I was going to start, so I need to move my starting point. If I'm in a bad current gas situation right now, I'm going to have to say if current gas is, is less than zero, then what we're going to need to do is two things. One is to say, okay, this is like no bueno, let's reset. Current gas is back to zero because I'm not starting there anymore. Moreover, uh, everything up to now, this whole situation, this whole ride we've been on, this this track, this section of the road trip is not going to work. I can't start at any of these places because I'm going to end up with the negative current gas. So let me try the next spot over. Or for you guys, sorry, this this whole section was no bueno. None like not this gas station wouldn't work. The previous ones wouldn't work. I can't start from any of those. All right, let's turn a new page. Let's start from the next one and see if we can do it there. So what I do is I'd set my start equal to i plus one, and Really, as long as I haven't made any really dumb mistakes, this should be this should be all the all the code. Um, I'm just gonna run it really quickly to make sure that I haven't made any mistakes. I'm gonna submit it here, 
And there we go, performed super well. Like I said, the code was really short here, but I, I think it was still a good problem to, to wrap your head around this idea of like, again, I, I'd argue that the, the part that's the least intuitive is, is the fact that our net net gas, gas purchase and gas spent always ends up being the same number no matter what. And so that's gonna be the deciding factor and if it's possible or not. The way we decide if it's possible or not is by actually determining how much current gas do I have at any given point. If that goes negative, then wherever I started is no go. We got to start from somewhere else. And that somewhere else is going to be at least where we were plus one step ahead. And we might have to drag that forward if we if we kind of keep getting into trouble. So I, I, hope that, I hope that makes sense. I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have, excuse me, any other questions you, you want me to answer, let me know down below if you have any questions on this. Let me know, like, comment, share, subscribe. I don't want to be one of those guys, but it would mean a lot. Like, I each one of these subscriptions, it really does mean a lot. It makes me happy when I see them, and I, I really, really hope that I'm I'm helping you guys here with you know at least at least an iota. So that's it, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.